Good afternoon, and welcome to the Hammond Academy of Science and Technology, or as we call it, HAST. I ordered a beautiful day. Somebody cooperated. You're welcome. Um, today marks the culmination of a five-year journey, and I promise you that compared to the pre-construction phase and the two-year construction phase, the length of this program will sorely pale in comparison. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce Mark Lopez, and he is here on behalf of Congressman Peter Vyskowski. Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Congressman Vyskowski regrets that he's personally unable to attend today's event. In his absence, that he asked that I say a few brief remarks. First, I would like to congratulate Mayor Tom McDermott and Purdue University Calumet, Chancellor, former Chancellor Cohen as well, for their hard work and commitment to seeing this project through. Their dedication to expanding and improving the educational opportunities for Hammond students is inspiring, and their work reminds us that one of the most important factors in our nation's future is the education of our young people. This is but one more example of the <clears throat> one more example of the significance that Mayor Tom McDermott has placed on investing in the city of Hammond's greatest resource, its people. <laughs> There's a Chinese proverb that goes, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. That's what the Hammond Academy of Science and Technology and their project-based curriculum is all about. This is an example of exactly the kind of new and innovative approach that will improve the opportunities for the next generation of our leaders, our youth. By putting a focus on project-based learning and providing the latest technologies, the Hammond Academy of Science and Technology is giving its students the advantages they need not only to reach their goals, but to pass, surpass their goals. In closing, I would like to present the Hammond Academy of Science and Technologies with the flag of the United States of America that has been flown over the United States Capitol in honor of today's event, and on, as well as take this opportunity to, on behalf of State Senator Frank Mervan, who's unable to be here, uh, point out that he had a flag flown and of the state of Indiana that is also uh, will be raised as part of today's uh, festivities. But in closing, again on behalf of Congressman Vyskowski and myself, congratulations on this achievement and may the Hammond Academy of Science and Technology provide thousands and thousands of our young people with a solid educational foundation for years to come. Thank you very much. At HAST, we're all about involving our students from day one when they walk in the door. So you'll see throughout today and later when you have your tours that everything is student run. If you all turn towards the flag, I'd like to introduce to you Sydney Smith and Sarah Anzalmo. They are our flag raisers today. And our national anthem will be sang by one of our students, Madeline McHugh. Madeline? Ooh. 
Thank you, Madeline. Today, we will share with you the story that has brought us together at this moment, at this place that we call Hast. Like every good story or book, there is a protagonist. According to Webster's Dictionary, a protagonist is a central character, generally a good guy and someone who is often considered to be a hero. For the story of Hast, our protagonist and the catalyst for this entire project is the city of Hammond Mayor Thomas M. McDermott. Congratulations, Hammond. Thanks for coming out, everybody. What a wonderful day. Started with an idea. The idea was simple. Let's give parents another option when it comes to educating their children. One of the things we talked about when we first took over was a lot of people are moving out of Hammond. Let's try to figure it out. It didn't just start within the last couple of years. It's been going on for a long time. So let's try to figure out why people are moving out. Let's try to correct that. We came up with great programs. The college-bound program helped keep people here also. This seemed like the logical next step. Let's create a charter school in Hammond to give parents another option. Give them another option. A lot of people weren't satisfied with what was going on, and they couldn't afford maybe to send their kid to a parochial school. And the only option left for these parents was to move out, move, to, move further south where the school systems, the public school systems are stronger. So we decided to venture down this path. And we partnered with the school city, and we tried to make it work, and it didn't work out very well. And then we went to the next step, working with Purdue West Lafayette. And we tried to make that work out, and it didn't work. And I'm sort of short-selling short this whole thing right now. You have to understand, this is a long process. Five, six years to get to where we are right now. It took us four years of administrative red tape, going through try after try. After West Lafayette, we tried to make it work locally with Purdue Cal, and it didn't work out. Then we went to Ball State, who's been very proactive in the state of Indiana about chartering schools. And we did our first submission to him. And I have to tell you, after three three and a half years of red tape and frustration and denials. I'm a very optimistic guy, but I was down. I didn't think it was going to ever happen. And, you know, I have to say, the former chancellor of Purdue University, Kaya Matt, Howard Cohen, kept me going all the way. And this is a partnership between Purdue, Cal, and Hammond. We were in this all the way together. And he kept us going. We said, we're going to give it one last shot. We're going to go to Ball State. We're going to give them our best shot. We're going to give them our submission, and hopefully it happens. And we turned in our first application, and I'll never forget it. It was denied. And we were like, what is going on? This is never going to happen. And they said, why don't you guys come back? We have some ideas. Why don't you fix your application? It's deficient in a couple areas. Come back and resubmit. And six months later, we went back, and we resubmitted. And we had a great community meeting. A lot of Hammond parents showed up, and it was a happy day. They approved us on the spot, and we thought, here we are. We're finally there. But we had a little shock. They wanted us open in a year. And you have to keep in mind, at this point, we're three and a half, four years into this project. We haven't put a shovel in the ground. We haven't hired a principal. We haven't hired staff. We haven't started funding. We basically had a concept that was probably two feet thick by the time it got approved. And then they said, not only do we approve you, we want you open. There was no way we could have built this beautiful building for you in that short amount of time. So what we did was we partnered with another agency. The guy, uh, Diocese of Gary, who helped us out and gave us a temporary location where the kids went to school last year. And then we hired our principal, Dr. Egan, who's done an excellent job. And then he hired the staff. <laughs> and then they hired the staff. And then we worked with our architect, Bill Hutton, and we got the construction crews out here. And we started seeing our dream take shape before our very eyes. I have to tell you guys, walking through the building yesterday, I was very silent. And I'm not a very quiet guy, as many of you know. I have to tell you, I've done a lot of things since I've been mayor. This was a big sense of accomplishment, walking through this building and seeing what these kids are going to be able to experience over the coming 50, 60 years in the city of Hammond. Really hit me. Really hit me. I'm going to try to pay homage to the people that work so hard on this and I'm going to brutalize it somehow. I'm going to forget somebody, so I'm apologizing right at the very beginning. But a lot of people helped us through the process, the four-year process to get approved, the two-year process to build this, without a lot of hard work and dedication from a lot of people, not just Mayor McDermott. This would not have happened. So please, if you'll hold your applause until I get done. Dr. Bob Rivers, Purdue Calumet. Dr. Howard Cohen, the former chancellor of Purdue Calumet. My current chief of staff, Tom Daberton. 
my former chiefs of staff, Marty Wilgus and Rick Kalinske. Kevin Smith, my attorney. Chris Cantar, both attorneys for the board. Chris Sacalaris and the entire board of HAST. Dr. Egan, of course, the great principal. Phil Talon and the Hammond Redevelopment Commission. The Hammond City Council that supports us so much. In fact, there's a few of them here right now. I saw Dan Spitali here. I saw Mark Kowinski here. Councilwoman Kim Poland, who sits on the board. Um, Councilwoman Venez, I saw her also. And I apologize if I missed anybody else. Ball State University, Georgette Davis. Thank you so much, Georgette, for believing in us and giving us the opportunity. I hope you're proud, because we are. The Gary Diocese, for letting us use St. Catherine of Siena. We couldn't have done it without the Gary Diocese. It was neat to see them reach out and help us out. Bill Hutton, the architect, who did a wonderful job. Last but not least, Lakeshore Chamber of Commerce, Dave Ryan, Downtown Hammond Council, Hammond Development Corps. I hope I haven't forgot too many people, but that gives you an idea. Over the last six years, just a sampling of the people that helped make this become a reality. So thank you. Congratulations to Hammond and to the students and to the parents. And for those that say that we're anti-public education, I totally disagree. This is pro-choice in regards to education. That's what this is about. Congratulations, Hammond Academy of Science and Technology. Our story also needed an artist, someone who could take a blank canvas and create a true work of art. This character would have to be someone who has the ability to see and imagine what Hast would look like when it was completed. You know, something like what's behind me here. Our artist and the person who conceptualized this whole vision for us was our architect, Bill Hutton. Bill? Mayor McDermott, distinguished guests, one must know where they are before they can know where to go. On this very site where we stand right now, 104 years ago there was a building here. It was designed by my great-grandfather, J.T. Hutton. There aren't very many architects that get an opportunity to design a building on the site of an ancestor. I'm truly honored. During the 1800s, schools began as a one-room schoolhouse Should I start over? Yeah. No. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> Tough. That's all right. During the 1800s, schools began as a one-room schoolhouse with slate blackboards, multiple classes in the school, a single textbook for all the kids. And since then, the methods of teaching and learning have accelerated at, at a great rate. As you know, Mayor McDermott, and former Chancellor Cohen of Purdue began this journey six years ago, and they invited us five years ago to get on board this train. And this train wasn't going to stop. It was going to leave the station, and it was going to make it. Early on, we suggested no textbooks in this facility. As the primary source of information, they're going to be using electronic laptops. As you will observe, the electronic age of information and learning, and contrary to the rectangular typical classrooms in the past, we've developed an octagonal shaped classroom called learning theaters. These learning theaters will be for these students so that they can learn with students not only across the nation but across the world. Typically lockers are located in the corridors. In this building they're not. They're located in personal belonging rooms. There is a bookstore, but the bookstore is used for laptops diagnostic testing and repairs. This building design is unique in nature by placing circulation corridors on the outside, typically in unoccupied spaces. We have instituted vast amounts of exterior windows for natural sunlight. The construction progress took 17 months for 108,000 square feet. In addition to the entire design team, I'd like to recognize two people who not only were on site daily as construction coordination people, but they also provided solutions along the way. And I don't know where Pete Novak is or, or Peter Blanchard, but wherever you are, give them a round. 
Thank you. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Dr. Rivers, a man I met five years ago, and what a trip it's been with him, and he's still going. I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm with him yet, but he's still there. I'd like to thank the school board members, Chris Zacalaris, and many others who have been a part of this process. It's now the responsibility of the school staff to teach these students and lead them into the future. And now the students will learn this as they pass through this facility. On a more personal note, I'd like to express my feelings that of a pregnant mother, one who bears her child for nine months and then gives birth to her spectacular newborn. Although this process took a lot longer, I have the same feelings of delivering a spectacular facility to all who will experience its environment. All of those who were involved from the beginning to the present have been blessed with the gift of wisdom to take the knowledge we have learned from this world as a learning theater and apply it to a successful project. As we leave today, and as I close, let us remember the great legacy that we have created and one that we're leaving behind. Mayor McDermott, if you would. We have a plaque we'd like to give you. I'm not going to read it, but it's a great plaque and he'll enjoy it. Thank you. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm back to the story. I'm sorry I'm short, so everybody else has to move the mic up. As with any story, there are many supporting characters. In construction terms, we call them worker bees. In our story, there were literally hundreds of people who took the vision from a piece of paper and transformed it into the building that you now see before you. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with my Thursday mornings at 9 o'clock, which was a usual at construction meetings for the rest of my life, but it seemed at times that they would never end. These characters, and believe me again when I tell you that some of them were truly characters, and I want to point out Pete, Pete, and Jeff Jackman, stand please. They put up with us as the owners, and I speak about the board now, every Thursday asking them, what's this for? What's that for? How much is that going to cost? Why are we paying for this? And truly, they had the patience of Job. So thank you again. These characters had to have a head character. And the person that directed this project was our always positive construction manager, Alex Garriott. When we first, uh, when our firm first got involved, I got to thank Tom Daberton. Tom spent the first two years working with our company and, and Mr. Hutton and the design team with all the uh, paperwork that the mayor described to you, the boxes of documents. So Tom, thank you for all your help. Uh, all the board members uh, deserve uh, recognition for their patience and their interest in the project, but especially Chris Sacalaris, Dave Ryan, um, Mark McLaughlin were at all the meetings, Sheldon Cutler uh, handled all the payments to all the contractors, and that kept everybody on schedule. When, when you have a project where people are getting their payments on a regular basis, that keeps the project moving. So thanks to them. All of our contractors on the job were A plus contractors. We had no problems with anybody. I think Mr. Hassey is here from Hassey Construction. I think Mr. Hobbs is here from Concrete Constructors. I think representatives from Kingston Tile and Sergeant Electric are also here. The contractors did a uh, fabulous job. Um, the design team, Mr. Hutton, uh, Peter from KJWW. There was probably 25 to 30 different entities involved in this building and they all got along and we all uh, uh, made this thing happen. I want to thank Jeff Jackman from our office and Peter Novak as uh, a couple other people thank them, but especially Peter Blachette. He was our head superintendent out here and the man had tireless efforts in getting this job completed. Our five goals when we started this job was a budget, to make it on budget, we did that. Make it on schedule, we did that. Quality work, 
That goes back to my praise for the contractors. The quality is fantastic. Safety was goal number four. We had over 100,000 man hours on the project, and I think a couple smashed fingers was it. And the fifth goal was a peaceful conclusion. And in this business environment today, there's always lawsuits, there's arguments, there's somebody not happy, somebody wants to get something out of somebody. That didn't happen on this job. Everybody worked harmoniously, and the job wrapped up peacefully. So I was very glad and personally honored to be involved, and uh, it was a great project. The Hammond Urban Academy board existed long before the first shovel was ever put into the ground. And while I have, may have been the face of the board, having served as its president, this story could have never been written without these individuals. They truly serve as the authors. When I call your name, stand up and keep standing. I know you're all shy, but Rick Kalinsky, <laughs> Sheldon Cutler, Tom Daberton, Jerry Gomez, Dana McHugh, Mark McLaughlin, Awana Miller, Kim Poland, and Dave Ryan. Don't sit down. These individuals behind me, some of whom have worked over five years on this project, gave their heart and their soul to Hast, and they all served without any compensation. As this story began, none of us were educators, but we have all become passionate about education, and we are all confident that the story of Hast will be a bestseller. Please join me again in thanking them. You thought you were going to get ready to leave, but wait. There was still a character that we needed to make our book complete. Someone who would keep us on course as we move forward, a captain of our ship. Someone who could set the plan, implement the strategy, and sail us successfully into the future. That captain would be our principal, Dr. Egan. Okay, I've been called lots of things, but not captain lately. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our honored guests from state and city officials, local business owners, our board of directors, of course, the mayor, everybody you've been introduced to here behind me, our honored, honored people, and finally, of course, the extended Haas family of staff, students, and family. They're all around you right now. If you haven't looked, any kid wearing a black polo shirt that says Haas or not is most likely a student of our school, and all of you, parents, parents, you're all out here. This is fantastic. As the leader of a science and technology school, I thought it would be fitting if I framed my, my remarks in the context of a science experiment, beginning with a research question and ending with results and conclusions. Our research question, how can the Hammond Academy of Science and Technology improve the educational offerings for and the results of junior and senior high school students in Northwest Indiana? My hypothesis, by creating a school that is student-centered and project-based using the best technologies possible, Hammond Academy will increase student engagement and student performance to meet or exceed state norms. Simple and straightforward. Variables include all the humans involved in this enterprise, the engineers, laborers, tradesmen, community members, parents, teachers, administration, and of course the students. Each one of these individuals brings their unique talents and abilities to our very human process of building a new school with a new curriculum using no new technologies. Every experiment is supposed to have a control there was not a single control variable in this entire project, except for the unending level of support from all of our constituencies. In every experiment, the observation and data collection period is crucial. We have observed and noted the quality of our teachers' instruction, student engagement, and parental and community involvement. We have numerous survey questionnaires for such things as school mascot selection, student evaluation of teachers, parent satisfaction with programs and instruction, and staff and parental um, evaluation of the administration and myself. Our data is not only test scores, but also the voice of our staff, parent, and students. Our data re results reveal many things. Most importantly, at Hammond Academy, our results reveal that all children, given the right supports, can succeed. Race, gender, and socioeconomic status are not limiting factors in student success. Thanks to dedicated teachers, parents, and students who understand that failure is not an option, that's our mantra, our school outperformed all our expectations, expectations in our first year of operations. Students who came to us high-performing remained high-performing. 
More significantly, though, is that students who came to us who were traditionally underperforming, did not like school, did not want to be in school originally, moved upward and onward in classroom performance and on standardized tests. With only six months of HAST instruction under their belts, our students showed extensive individual growth on the ISTEP tests. Best of all, our students overwhelmingly report that they like school now. Yes, children can and do like school here at HAST. Our materials, the best possible mixture of humans and technology. Staff was carefully selected from hundreds of candidates. Students were randomly selected from hundreds of candidates. We chose our technology based on the advice of instructional technology experts from Purdue Calumet. Our curriculum is the result of research, years of research at local, state, and national levels. And our building is the result of multi-year planning collaboration between the architects, the engineers, and the educators. Again, a very unusual process. Our procedure, way too many steps to list. Suffice it to say, as you've heard before, that at any given moment for the last 12 to 18 months, there have been literally hundreds and hundreds of people associated with this experiment. Each one of these, the student learning math, the teacher using new methods, and the countless individuals on the building site made their own contribution to what we can only consider to be a long, lengthy and multifaceted procedure that is building a school from scratch. Our results. Students know that they are the center of our education at HAST. They realize the impact that they have on their own learning. They know that learning projects are based on real life situations. They can articulate the rele relevance of the research and the results, and they want to be in school. They email us and let us announce when they're going to be absent or to get help with personal or academic concerns, and they want to do well. Conclusions. And actually, oh, oh, there you go. Okay. While this report is not thoroughly scientific in its format or content, I can state with certainty and pride that Hammond Academy of Science and Technology has indeed improved the educational offerings and results of junior and senior high school students here in Northwest Indiana. We are committing to improving annually and comprehensively. And I now ask some of my staff to come forward with a few little tokens of appreciation from us, HAST, to some of the people that you've already met today. Um, come on in. Mayor McDermott, Mr. Hutton, Mr. Garriott, and Chris Sacklaris, please stand up. Um, yes, I, I'm wrapping it up. Anyway, uh, Chris is going to come back to the podium. I just want to point out again how student-centered we are. Kids that are half students, raise your hands just so people know where you are in this cloud. All right. Parents of half students. Yes. All right. My staff is all around you, too. Staff, half staff, raise your hands. Let people know where you are. Thank you. And uh, to show how we can turn anything on a dime or on a moment's notice, all these kids that are upstairs with balloons, we found them as they were walking in today and said, we've got a job for you. Head upstairs, grab the balloons. So I'm going to let Chris take over again. Thank you all for coming to this amazing historic moment for Hammond. We are here, we are here, and we are proud. Thank you. And so our story of how Hass came to be ends today. But the real story, the story of the children of Hast, that they will write is just at its beginning. As we open these doors behind me, giving the students, parents, and the community the keys, we expect you to write the sequel to our story. Ready, students? Just as we release these balloons and watch them float upward in the sky, we expect the Haas students to also soar to new heights and be the shining beacons of their generation. Thank you so much for coming. This is the end of our formal program. We are going to place the time capsules in. They won't actually be sealed until Tuesday and cut the ribbon. But if you'd like to go on a tour and not witness what we're going to do behind us, you can go to either one of the side doors and there will be students there that can lead you on the tour of the school. Thank you all so much for coming.